Hello, this is Justin Seven with SportsbookReview.com. NFL is going to start gearing up in about five weeks with preseason play, so now is as good a time as any to talk about one of my favorite ways to make money, and that's betting on NFL season wins. Anyone who's done much sports betting knows about something called the Pythagorean Theorem, which is a way to predict how many games a team will win in a sport based on how many points they scored and how many points they allowed. Here's the crash course summary. If you draw a right angle triangle, put points for on one side, points against on the other, and you can calculate the distance of the hypotenuse. The odds of a team winning in individual game during a season is then points for squared divided by x squared. Now in the NFL we use an exponent of 2. In baseball you can use the same thing with runs with an exponent of 1.8. NBA works pretty well with an exponent of 14. I think college basketball is about a 10. College football is its own little beast. So once you're armed with this formula, you can go to cbssportsline.com, uh, type in points for, points against for all the teams in the NFL, and this will give you a starting point to describe how well a team with this many points would have done last year. Now it's not always a good idea to just carry forward how many wins you think they should have won last year to the next year, so there's a couple adjustments you can do. Uh, the first adjustment I would do is what I call reverting to the mean. The first adjustment I would do is what I'll call reverting to the mean. All teams are driven inward towards an 8-8 eight eight season. Good or bad, 10 years from now they're going to have moved towards 8-8. Eight and eight. And on any given year what I'll do is I will weigh my projection with a weight of 3 and 8 with a projection of 1. So for example, if you thought a team was going to win 10 games, I'd give that 10 a weight of 3, which would be 30, at 8, 38 divided by 4. So the reversionary force would push that 10 win, 10 win team down to about 9.5. Now a second adjustment you can do uh, in addition to just looking at points for and against, is to do what I'll call a turnover adjustment. You look at the turnover differential a team had during the entire season. About a little over 80% of all turnovers tend to be luck-based. That is not directly related to skill of the team. I mean, some of the turnovers are obviously correlated to the team. A team that passes more is going to give up more interceptions and fumbles. A team that's up will tend to have fewer turnovers, so good teams tend to have fewer turnovers. But still, a vast majority of the turnovers are purely luck-based. Um, the weight, the, the impact one turnover has in a game typically would change the, the score outcome by about three and a half points. So when I'm doing a turnover adjustment for a team for projected wins, I'm only going to use an adjustment of three. So if a team was, had a turnover adjustment of, say, plus ten, I would penalize it 30 points. That is, I would decrease its points for by 15 and increase its points against by 15 to come up with my projection for the next year. Now another adjustment I like to make is for strength of schedule. Now a quick and easy way to do this is you just look at the division and say well how many wins do I project for each team in the division? If uh, the, every other team in the division is projected to win 10, 10 games, that's an extremely difficult schedule for the, the, the team who's playing those 10 win teams. So you'd have a downward adjustment. And some divisions are especially difficult, which tends to actually lower all the season wins for the teams in there, whereas some divisions are much easier. You know, if you have a division that has Cleveland and Cincinnati, who are likely going to be weak teams, uh, that's going to actually inflate some of the already very good teams. Okay, well, here's my spreadsheet. If you want to look at it, play with it, change it, do whatever you want to it, you can find it at sportsbookreview.com. Go into the Handicapper Think Tank and do a search for NFL 2009 Season Wins Spreadsheet. If you don't feel like doing all this work, I'll just give you the turbo version. Here are what I think are the strongest season win plays this year. Baltimore over 8.5 minus 155. Cincinnati under 6.5 minus 110. Cleveland under 7 minus 150. New England under 11.5 minus 120. And Tampa Bay over 6.5 plus 100. If you're betting these season wins, a question that I ask myself is, how much is one half of a game worth as far as juice to pay? If you want the quick answer, if it's near 8, it's about 50 cents. So if you're going to lay minus 150, that's fine as long as, a game, as long as the line is a full game off. How do you figure this out? You want to figure out the odds of getting exactly 8 heads flips out of 16 coin flips. Uh, the way you do that, you take 16 choose 8 and divide that by 2 to the 16th. This works out to be about 20%, so if you're betting on will the number of heads or tails be more than 8 out of 16 flips, about 20% of the time you'll have exactly 8, 40% more, 40% less. 
So if uh, your fair line is eight flat and you're taking under eight and a half, the fair price would be about minus 150. The further you get from eight, the less it's worth. Now there's obviously a lot more work you could do to estimate your season wins. You could actually go through manually the whole uh, schedule to do strength of schedule adjustments. You could look at roster changes. But even doing this little bit of work should be enough to beat uh, these small markets. Now there's one more advantage of actually doing the work though and coming up with your own spreadsheet and that is uh, these projected number of wins also serves as a power ranking. Roughly for every one and a quarter games better a team is, that's the equivalent of about three points. So if I were estimating a spread for a team that was anticipated to have eight wins versus ten and a half wins, two and a half games, that would be a six point advantage on a neutral field. Uh, or nine or three depending on which home field it was at. That's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed my turbo presentation of NFL 2009 season wins. If you have any more questions, feel free to send it to me at justin at sportsbookreview.com.